And here are the players for the second annual Gashimov Memorial 2015 in memory of Ugar Gashimov, who passed away in 2014. He's a great player, good guy, too. He'll be sorely missed. Magnus Carlson needs no introduction. World champion, number one rated in the world. Fabiano Caruana, Italian-American. Number two, sometimes three in the world. Vishyanan from India, former world champion. So getting older, but he's still formidable. Honest Gary from the Netherlands. Great, great world-class player. Wesley So just recently changed his federation in the United States. After a tough U.S. championship, he'll be looking for revenge. Vladimir Kramnik. I mean, who's... <laughs> <laughs> the guy's still a monster. Former world champion from Russia. Maxime Vichet-Lagraf from France. Top world-class player. Don't take Maxime lightly. Mama Jarov from Azerbaijan, the home country of the tournament. Top world-class player. Ralph Mamanjov, I believe it's pronounced, also from Azerbaijan. Top player in Azerbaijan. And I picked Mickey Adams. Michael Adams from England last. Mickey and I have... We're only one day apart in our birthdays. So there they are, folks. The 10 players in the second annual Gashimov Memorial 2015. Hi, folks. John Cordisco back again. Round one of the second annual Bugar Gashimov Memorial in memorial for a grandmaster from Azerbaijan that passed away a couple of years ago. Young guy, too. What a tragedy. Great player. Good guy. Anyway, this is between former world champion and current world champion. On the way, this tournament has three world champions, Kramnik, Anand, and Carlson. So it's a hell of a tournament. Maxime Vichet-Lagraf, Mamanjarov, Mickey Adams, who I like a lot. Mickey's a good guy. And I, let's see, Anish Giri. Oh, there's a bunch of players in a top, another Azerbaijan player I'm not familiar with. Anand is white. Carlson is black. Let's get to it. It's going to be a closed Ruri, but it's not going to be a Berlin. The interesting Marshall that we'll go through the opening here. It's pretty much standard stuff. The Marshall or white. Sacrifices the pawn. Or excuse me. Black sacrifices the pawn for some action here. C6. D3. Uh, the whole idea is, look at all this undeveloped pieces on this side. That's the idea of the marshal. Bishop, rook goes back. Bishop f5, queen f3. Now, last the last book move. This is a new move here, from what I understand. Bishop g6. And after Magnus played bishop g6, Vishyanan thought for a half an hour. Interesting to be sure. Now, if those of you guys are wondering, well, who just get the pawn? Bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, but queen checks, you lose the queen. So that pawn isn't free there. For those of you that are wondering, the computer like rook e8, then after rook takes, queen takes, knight d2. Small advantage for white, even though he's up a pawn, that's how much extra development black has. Bishop takes, pawn takes, same reason why the queen can't take. The discovered attack on the queen loses the queen. Bishop f4. D4. Now that's a really tough move there. Just ramming it down your throat. you got to take it. Bishop, knight. And queen takes. White's still up a pawn, but he's going to lose that d pawn. Bishop b5 for Vishyanand. And Magnus goes queen to d7. Now, right now, Magnus is in trouble. It doesn't look like it. But it's a pawn and a third up for white right now. Magnus usually doesn't get a position like this where he's just got to grind it out. Knight to d5. f6. I mean, there's nothing better. 
I mean, just a slip here. Give you an idea. Bishop to d6 loses. What f6? Those of you wondering if Bishop had taken the, the rook. Watch the watch this mating attack. Knight f6 check. If pawn takes. If pawn takes, queen takes, and there's no defense for the mate. If he goes to h8, knight takes queen. So you have to be extremely careful here. Tread very carefully. Knight takes b4. F takes. White still up a pawn, but black king is in trouble, I think. Queen checks. Has to take. Knight takes. Bishop takes. Rook takes. Now this is an end game that Magnus is going to suffer through. And he's not one for doing that. Well, who is actually? Nobody likes to suffer through an end game. Down a pawn, in best play, you draw. Who wants to deal with that nonsense? So he tries the rook, he trades rooks. Knight e3. Now you gotta understand both black and white have back rank problems. More white than black. And what I mean by black's bank rank problems, if somehow Vichy can get his rook to the seventh rank and completely pin in the black king. I think he has a good chance. Now, right now, he's upon the third up and score. He decides to go knight to e3, which I think is a safe move. The computer like knight to b4. And there's a long series of moves. He eventually wins the a pawn. He can save the, the knight, but it's it's a real pain in the neck. I don't want to go through it with you. He plays the safe move. He figures, okay, I'm up a pawn. Worst case scenario is draw. He does have the white pieces, but he caught Magnus. And this is an opportunity to get Magnus. Because Magnus usually doesn't screw up like that. He just miscued. I think it was just part of his preparation was off. So he plays the rook, gets the open file. A3. A5. Computer likes F3. F4. Rook D1. I like rook d1 myself. Decides to go h4. Bishop back to g6. And rook to d1. Okay. b4. A takes, A takes. G4. He's getting those pawns up there. Well, he's got a, a pawn advantage on that side. Why not? B3. This knight is guarding this very, a very key square here. H5 kicks the bishop off. King to G2. Can Vichy win this? I know he certainly can't lose. Play on. King F8. King's got to come up. King's a really important piece in the endgame, as we all know. King G3. Rook A8. He's looking to go after the B-pawn. Rook to D2. This is a really big threat right here. H6. Knight. Bishop E6. Here comes the knight back around. Hitting Black's B-pawn. Bishop. It's got to guard it. F3. Rook C8. King, rook c1, knight f5. It's a two, almost a two-point advantage for white, but try to convert this. Magnus is playing a very, very stubborn defense. Stubborn. He's a world champion, highest rated player of all time, of course. King g8. Interesting, though. That is the computer move, and I never would have thought of king to g8, frankly. Rook checks, king h7, rook d7, king g8, rook d8, king h7. That move 43, so I wasn't trying to get to a time control. 
Rook d7. That's a two-fold two -fold repetition, those of you that are wondering. Knight d6, Fisher goes, okay, uh, I'm not going to do a three-fold repetition. And, th and in this tournament, you cannot do a three-fold, excuse me, a draw at under 40 moves. And we're on 45, so the bishop, rook e7. This is one of those weird anomalies where you're up almost over a point and a half, almost two points in score, and you can't win. He's playing very stubborn. Bishop d5, good find there. King f5. For those who are wondering what he could have gone after, Rook checks his murder. Absolute murder. King f5. Rook c6. King e5. Now he can come over. Gives up the pawn. Knight f5. What to do? What to do? Now you all see why bishop can't take. Rook checks. Winning the bishop. G5, rook checks anyway, king h8, rook, king up, check, king, rook, king, and that's when they decided to draw it. Oh, I thought Vichy had a good position there. He really did. He just, Magnus is just so tough. That's... And, and Vichy's a great player. When I say this, I'm not putting Vichy down. That's the sign of a really great player. When they're in a losing in a really difficult position, you just can't beat them. They can't beat you, but you have them, and you just can't get a hold of them. So Magnus pulls off a draw. I think that was a tough draw. And he had to work really hard to get it. And I'm sure he's not satisfied with his play. But anyway, folks... That's one of the games from round one of the Gashamar Memorial, second annual, being played in Azerbaijan. And I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.